Hi friends, I'm going to make this brief today. It's going to be 108 degrees it's projected to be and we've, we're in the middle of a heat wave. This whole week's been really hot. If you're standing outside for even three minutes, you start sweating even if you aren't moving around. So let me take you on a tour. First off, I have my aloe over here and my cherry tree. Um, then I have a citronella. And I have some melons growing here, but I don't think it's going to make me any melons before the, the end of the summer. And mixed in here are some tomatoes I transplanted from the Solo Cups. So these are cherry tomatoes. I only grabbed a few from here so far because it's starting to grow, which will give me fruit in the month of September. Um, then I started to pull up all my brassicas that were back here, a whole row of them, and I plugged in some dill seeds, cilantro seeds, uh, romaine lettuce seeds, the cos seeds, um, I think parsley as well, and there's another melon that I transplanted in there, but like I said, I doubt that it will give me any fruit in the nick of time. And over here in the front to kind of shade it out and to help it, you know, in this heat is my Kilimanjaro marigolds, and they're gorgeous. They're like big blooms right now. They're not blooming very much and for some reason they started developing or maybe when they're young they're yellow, yellowish green. Then they become these white blooms that look really gorgeous. And then I have the Mazurkia zinnias and they're starting to get a little bit mildewy. They're really pretty. And here are my original brassicas. I cut them for my chickens. And over here I have uh, some tomatoes, also from the Solo Cups. And hopefully they'll give me some fruit. The problem right now is I have um, raccoons and other things that are coming in here and I think they're eating my tomatoes because it went from way too many tomatoes to practically nothing. So that was one L-shaped bed and here is another. Same thing, I have brassicas and then I plugged in a bunch of tomato seedlings and now they're starting to have some height and some fruit. These will be the black cherry and the other ones were the um, chocolate cherries. Here's my cherry red zinnias, some dahlias, and I kept plugging and plugging seeds in here for the tithonia and it's finally growing and oh my gosh it is so tall. It is probably six or seven feet tall. And in here are some little lily pet zinnias in pink and orange. Really, really cute. And this one I think is the Luminosa Pink Zinnia. It's really a smaller variety. And some other cactus uh, sunflowers, I mean zinnias, but I don't know if they're going to grow or bloom in time. I'm hoping so. Um, and then here is a chrysanthemum. Some more dahlias. I hope they grow in time. Another dahlia here. And I have a lot of those yellow ones. I have a few burgundy zinnias, uh, dahlias. And then I have this purple prince. Huge zinnia. I had to tie it so it won't fall over. Some Hawaiian marigolds. Some salvia. I love this color. It's so pretty. And that pink zinnia right next to this salvia, it's just gorgeous and it smells so good. Mm. And in here I have some tomatoes. Like I said, I have I had a ton. And I have a celosia. This is the first that you're seeing it. It's gorgeous. So 
So that's one celosia, and here's another celosia. Gorgeous. That's the first time I ever grew it. And another marigold popping up. And possibly a dahlia? No, it's a um, basil. I plugged it in there. Um, I just try to stick in here as many things as I can and encourage things to grow and try to mulch things. So here I stuck in some new seedlings, um, seeds for nigella. Love in a mist. A yellowish with red tinge dahlia. This one's really gorgeous. It's a pink dahlia. I love this one so much. And a melon. Some candy stripes, Cosmos. Right now they're not very stripey. They're very burgundy colored. Oh, here's one. It's pretty stripey. Some stock. These smell really good and they're edible too. And a yellow zinnia. Really, really pretty. And right now the alyssum doesn't look too hot. It was getting burnt, but the new growth is really nice and lush. In this bed, it's my heart-shaped bed close to my doorway. I have bee balm and the bees are loving it. And I'm just letting it bloom like crazy. Earlier this year, someone cut down their tree, so we collected the stumps and we're going to use it for hugel culture in our new beds later. And here I have a tomato plant. I forget what variety. I labeled it, but I can't really look for the tags right now. And here is some marigold, Linnaeus. Diablo Cosmo is finally um, tapering off. It's not blooming as much. Whatever the blooms they have, it's few, but it, I mean, it lasted me the whole summer, so I really love this, this variety. And here is my true hyssop, and it's already gone to, gone to its flowering, and I'm going to collect the florets for the seeds. Here. So over here I have hyssop, true hyssop. And it's quite fragrant. It's starting to go to seed and I'm going to collect it so that I can grow more. But I believe, I have to research it again, I believe that it is a perennial. Um, but when it's blooming, it's really gorgeous and it smells so good. Look at that purple. And I have here lemon balm, bee balm. Uh, lemon balm, Melissa officinalis. It smells and, and tastes lemony and we put it in teas. Here are some leeks, a basil here, some sage, some whorehound, white whorehound, and that's good for coughs. And again, the, the bee balm. Over here in this bed, this was our first bed and it had snapdragons and various things but I planted some tomato seedlings in here and it did bloom and have a lot of fruit tomatoes but right now currently I'm not sure why it's um, very full of foliage but not very many flowers or fruit unless it's being eaten by something which I don't know but there are lots and lots of foliage, if you can see. So that's the small variety of tomato. There was a big variety, the black creme, the mortgage lifter. And so you can see even the leaves are bigger. Um, I did get quite a few tomatoes and now it's being eaten, I think. And I bagged a few of them in there so that I could have some for myself. So the wildlife doesn't get to it. I have a lettuce leaf basil in there. I've been seeing a lot of grasshoppers in here lately. 
I have that Australian cucumber growing here, um, but it's starting to get, oops, it's starting to get a little diseased. Some more tomatoes galore. My ginger is growing really nicely. I have it in partial sun, partial shade. And at the base, I just sowed some dill, tetra dill. So that in that same bed, I have some snapdragons still, but they're quickly dying. However, I heard that they are perennial, so we'll see. I have several aloe plants, so if ever I need aloe, I have it there. I have a gardenia, and I have, this is the gardenia, I believe, and then this is the um, jasmine, and another jasmine, which for some reason isn't doing too well. Hi friends, this is my other heart-shaped bed. I know you can't tell because everything's overgrown. My tomatoes have grown on over the edges. I have different varieties, the indigo rose tomato, um, patio choice yellow tomatoes, and some other cherry tomatoes. I also have my own choy over here, my kangkong, and it's looking marvelous, and a basil right there in the center to try to ward off pests, and it's produced for me a lot. And over here, some peppers some basil, some cabbage that's getting eaten by something, but that's fine as long as it keeps my other um, vegetables alive. It gets full on something else. There's another basil. Lots of patio choice tomatoes coming along. Um, some more basil. Uh, more cherry tomatoes. This is the Thai basil. Smells so good. And it's my favorite herb, basils. Lots more tomatoes, but like I said, something's been eating it. So I get what I get each day. And some zinnias. And that's about it. And then I have a couple huge avocado trees that provide shade. And I'm loving it.